Domestic violence has risen globally since the start of the pandemic. Doctors in one medical study even called it a pandemic within a pandemic. At Harbor House, the Central Florida, the domestic violence shelter has seen an increase of people in their outreach programs with survivors working with their legal time. CEO Michelle Sprezel says there are advocates in the community that make a difference as well. Next week, dozens of them will be donning footwear from all, of all kinds in downtown Orlando when they walk a mile in her shoes. It's a really fun event that raises awareness that's much needed about domestic violence, specifically um, violence against women and men's role in how they can help us stop it. And so it's about men holding other men accountable and they do it in a very fun way. And it's about going out wearing high heels or heels of your choice or flats or whatever it is that you want to do and walking a mile in her shoes. And so we do it every year. We start at the courthouse and we walk down to city hall, a lot of different, amazing, uh, strong men participate in it. And I say that as far as being advocates. And so Mayor Dyer has been in it. Um, Sheriff Mina has been in it. Um, a lot of other elected officials have been in the process of, well, <laughs> they've been doing it. Um, and so it's really, really fun because it is truly about the fact that they rally their friends and their coworkers um, to come together and really take a stand against domestic violence in a fun and healthy way. We've talked before about sometimes people not wanting to get involved in other situations, but why is this so important for men, like you said, to hold other men accountable? Well, because really, when you're looking at domestic violence, domestic violence is is not gender specific, but at the same point in time, it, it does happen that women are more victims than men are victims and the perpetrators are men. And so often they're more likely to listen to another another man when it comes to what you should or shouldn't do. We're talking about power and control, which is what domestic violence is, it's power over another person. When you have um, another force who says, that's not cool, you shouldn't treat another person that way. Or if you have a man who says, hey, I'm a survivor of domestic violence. I watched my father beat my mom and I'm not going to be that man. I'm going to raise my son to be a different type of person. And you have that be the message that goes out. It is so, so, so powerful. We've seen a, a rise in domestic violence situations during the pandemic. Talk a little bit about if you're still seeing more of that and what that effect has been. But what I'm going to talk about would be we're seeing a change in domestic violence in our local community. It's the change is how lethal the situations have become. So we're having more survivors who are calling us because they've been um, held hostage by their abuser or there has been there's been guns involved. And the other piece is strangulation. And so as advocates, and one thing we want to let more people know, especially if you're in a domestic violence situation, is if someone puts their hands on your neck in the attempt to strangle you, the likelihood of that turning into a homicide increases. And mm. so strangulation is definitely, definitely an indicator of domestic violence homicide. And so when we have a survivor who says he choked me last night, we know that the lethality within that situation is so high and we want to make sure we can help that person the best that we can. And so part of it is the fact that there is the, the change in the dynamics in the workplace that someone can work from home now. And so that user might be there all the time. And so the person doesn't get that break as far as going to work or the kids going to school or they're going to work. And that increases the intensity in the home. Now, she also says if you suspect that a friend or family member may be in a domestic violence situation, instead of just calling or texting them to check on them, it's important to FaceTime them and try to actually see them and see what is going on with them when you call to check in on them. Yeah, and there's so many ways that you can mm -hmm. do that, right? With FaceTime or Zoom. Now, the best way to reach out to Harbor House is by calling or texting their crisis hotline. You can also send a message now through Facebook. There's so many ways that mm -hmm. we can help each other, and that's, that's great. So the eighth annual Walk a Mile in Her Shoes is coming up Thursday, February 17th. Registration's at 5 o'clock with the mile walk beginning at 6 o'clock at the Orange County Courthouse. Registration $35 with a T-shirt and $25 without.